Okay, so Qualtrics is a company that was set up by a marketing professor um, in Utah. And it's kind of like if you as an academic decided, I'm going to spend my life and tons of, of money making a great software for running experiments, you would get Qualtrics. So basically, most of your software has been extremely easy to use, but really limited. But Qualtrics is something where you can just tell everything you use, whoever did build this really knew what they were doing, and they tried to make it as useful as possible. You will not be able to do everything you want under the sun. It's not as good as SciPy and Python for everyone who likes to do things by hand, because you obviously can have a broader range there, but it's much, much easier. So you can honestly program an experiment, a simple one, like maybe if you had a cognitive tutor without any feedback, you could honestly program that in about 20 minutes, because it's a matter of just sort of creating a survey and dragging and dropping things. And it's also designed so that on top of being able to use survey built-in functions, you can customize the HTML and JavaScript as much as you want. So what that means is, strictly speaking, it's as bad as just doing the thing in HTML and JavaScript yourself. So you can customize it to do all kinds of complicated things, process whatever code you want on the back end. It can also make external calls to a server, which means that you can run other scripts that you want and have that information go to Qualtrics or be um, fed out to Qualtrics. So just to sort of give you a sense, um, here's the My Surveys list. I have a bunch of surveys in here. Uh, it's also something that they sell to business schools and businesses. So what's really nice about that is that pretty much they're subsidizing the development of a, of a really powerful tool. Qualtrics can't have big problems with connectivity. They're constantly putting in new features. Um, it's sort of got a lot of strengths. It's easy to share surveys with other people. So let's say you create a survey. Okay, so here's the basic thing. There's a block. That's one of the basic units, and you can create questions. So in terms of questions, you can have multiple choice. Anything you click on in Qualtrics, just click. It looks like you can click on it. Click on it. It'll give you some options. You can choose options, uh, how many of them. You can oops, look at the different question types, and they've got an impressive range. So they've got, of course, just showing text. They've got graphics, which you can upload or you can just load directly from some server you're hosting it on. A matrix table, which allows some pretty complicated um, questions. Text entry of various kinds. You can make that an essay question. Sliders, which is good. Just programming that in something like E-Prime, at least a few years ago, was a pain to do by hand. You can rank order events. Uh, make lots of complicated judgments, like binary choice plus confidence. Constant sum. So actually, you say those numbers have to add up to something, and they won't, uh, people will know when they do it. Pick, group, and rank. So pretty much here you can do a categorization task. Because they have different places where you can sort things. They can record the ranking or the group of it. Hotspot. I haven't played with so much, but I think this is where you can um, where you can actually put an image and designate areas that someone will click on and activate. So what you'll find is that Qualtrics, what they've made things for might be very different from what you intend, but you'll sort of be able to adapt really easily to do all manner of things that they actually have no idea you would even use it for, but oh well, the product is pretty flexible. So you can think what experiments you might be able to run with that. Heat map is a similar kind of idea, that you can click on different aspects of it and it'll actually record where people are clicking. Uh, Sign scale, sure. Gap analysis, what is that? Some other kind of complicated measuring survey question. Drill down so you can drop down options. So this is actually what we use. Um, the cognitive tutor that we have written, I actually just implemented a version of it in Qualtrics that um, didn't give feedback because I just want to see how it worked. But I actually suspect that I think someone will have to work it out a bit, but I'm pretty sure you could do cognitive tutors in Qualtrics. So you could just sort of put in code um, JavaScript to HTML to get them to give simple responses. They've also got a built-in scoring function. So you could sort of see to what extent that lets you do the kinds of things that you do with cognitive tutors. It's probably limited in other ways, but um, it would be a great way to sort of, if you want to make a cognitive tutor in 20 minutes and just sort of quickly put it online and send someone a link, then you can do that. It's also optimized for mobile deployment. So you can actually send someone a, a survey and they just do the experiment on their computer. Timing, so this records how long people spend on a page, which is pretty simple, but a lot of softwares don't have it. It can also control timing. So that pretty much lets you do experimental things like make sure everyone studies something for the same length of time. Uh, or force them to advance after a certain period. This can record pe people's browse info, and they've actually even got a thing where you can upload files. Um, in terms of the other main thing besides questions, uh, in terms of questions, you can also do all kinds of things on the side here, like adjust aspects of the questions, force people to give responses. 
um, add logic, like skipping things or displaying things, you can, the other good thing is the survey flow is gonna actually show you not just the questions, but how they're organized. So if you open it up here. So that's a block, one of the basic units. Uh, within each block, they've got all the randomization you think they should have for questions, they've got it. You can randomize the order of questions, you can randomize the subsets, you can randomize multiple choice answers. And in terms of the items here, they're very simple but really powerful. So they have branches. So of course now, once you can do logic, you can do all manner of things with Quadrix. Um, and you can even do logic that's based on things like a question response or embedded data, which is pretty much the equivalent of a variable. So that means that from the time you can set variables, call variables and access variables and base logic, you just have a, a fully powerful uh, kind of mini programming language. Uh, good options, you can actually do a regular expression, which I never used. Another example of a simple item that just works really well is a randomizer. So surprisingly, many people build platforms that just don't have randomization in, even people who are pretty savvy like uh, Coursera and other edX platforms. So you drop items in here and then randomly assign the order of them. So you can randomize items that way. But also it's really easy now to do an experiment. Because if you drop a variable item in here, like an embedded data is the equivalent of a variable. So condition is one. And then you make a separate one. Is two. Well now what you do is you say randomly present one of these elements and then it just conditionalizes everything in the survey on that. So you've got a set of conditions. What is nice is that without anyone requesting it, they just randomly came out with this thing which is evenly present elements. And what that does is it ensures that you don't get, um, you, you essentially don't get random with replacement. It'll balance off numbers for you. And if actually you do your experiment and you're missing some participants, you can just go in there and set the numbers yourself so that it'll balance off and get you the exact numbers you want. So it's kind of like, it's a very tiny touch, very simple to implement, but the average person who does, um, makes this kind of product, just does not think of those kind of things. Um, embedded data is how we set variables. So you can use it for all kinds of things, assigning people conditions, collecting data, and so on. Um, web service, or okay, web services, I think, how they make the call six external scripts. So they send whatever information um, you want to send, and they will take back information. So they have an API for that. Uh, authenticators, a very simple item, but it lets people log in. So what it means is that you can actually create, um, uh, so they have another kind of thing called a panel, which is really designed for surveys, but you can adapt it, but it's a way of keeping track of participants and their data. So what that means is that you could send the, you can email these surveys out using their automated mailer, and then people are linked to this panel. And so when they sign in, they could actually go to authenticate and type in a name and password or any other information you'd want, to give to the, you'd want them to give. Um, what is that useful for? For example, you could actually use Qualtrics easily to do homework assignments. So if you have to teach a course and you want to just get homeworks, just put in a list of your participants, of your students, you send an email out, they sign with the authenticator, and then do all the exercises on this. It could even automatically score them for you. And the final thing they have here that's useful is the end of survey item. Again, this is an example where an end of survey item should just end the survey. But because of the way Qualtrics is set up, the end of survey item actually is super powerful you can show people any message you want. So for everything that you see here, there's a corresponding kind of like backend library. So for example, um, all the questions you make, all the surveys you make, there's a library that just collects them together for you. You can share them with other people in your group. And you can also store a whole database of end of survey messages. You can store a database of emailing messages sent out to people. And the end of survey can also automatically redirect people to any link you choose. So you can send them to another web page. And what that means is you can redirect them to another survey. So from the time you can chain like multiple surveys together, you can build up something that's like, looks like a pretty sophisticated course or interactive set of modules with very minimal effort, where each is a tiny survey that you're composing on itself. Uh, there's one feature here actually that is not available in these sort of cheaper versions, but it's called a table of contents. And what that does is it takes each of those blocks and instead of just moving through it sequentially, you actually can go to a page that will show you every block so you can now like go to the end, come back to the beginning, stop halfway, and pretty much what that does is start taking it from a survey software tool into the realm of being something you could use for e-learning. Trying to think if there's anything else to sort of highlight quickly. Um, lots of easy things, printing surveys, oh, you can edit all the CSS you want as well, and there's a bunch of advanced options here that uh, 
I'm sure people would check out if they're actually using it, like triggers so that when a survey ends, you can do an action like email someone, email yourself, email someone else, put whatever information you want to pipe in. And um, scoring is, I actually haven't used scoring much, but someone could probably explore that and see what they can do with it. Okay. Um, so I think that sums it up. The one other thing is that when you actually call Qualtrics, you can actually call Qualtrics and someone will pick up within five minutes. Like if I call right now, someone will pick up that phone actually within probably a minute or two. And that's, I mean, just shocking, you know, just in general. But especially for a company where you actually get someone on the um, phone and they actually know what they're doing. They understand how the system works. They can tell you pretty advanced things about JavaScript and HTML. And so the last thing I'm showing here is just like a website of links that I compiled that will help you sort of see the things that are most useful for Qualtrics, uh, for experiments. So it pretty much tries to aggregate some of the good articles they've got on their website, but put it with more of a focus towards psychology. And also things that like custom code we've come up with for storing variables and accessing variables and also kind of using the functionality they have in novel ways. Even though they're super good with their system, they don't always know exactly what you're trying to do. So you can probably come up with ways of using their system in sort of novel ways that they haven't even thought of. Okay. All right, cool. So I think I hope that was a reasonably informative but whirlwind tour of everything they could possibly have. Yeah.